Ms. Wayne Chen, Technical Advisor for the MBIPV Project in Malaysia. Uh, you work for the Pusat Tanaga Malaysia or the Malaysian Energy Centre. Correct. For more than solar energy use uh, in the country. In Malaysia, yes. Yeah. Well, first question uh, I'd like to ask you is, uh, Ms. Chen, is uh, the Pusat Tanaga Malaysia uh, organisation, what is it about and what is your role in it? Right. Pusat Tanaga Malaysia is actually first established in 1998 and is a non-profit organisation administered by the Ministry of Energy, Water and Communications. And the role that it plays is actually a think tank, an organisation on energy issues pertaining to the country for Malaysia. So it actually brings forward proposals on energy policies to the Ministry of Energy for the Ministry of Energy to endorse. And one of the things that it's doing is that it's actually paving out RE and Energy Efficiency Roadmap Master Plan for the Ministry of Energy to endorse. RE is Renewable Energy, right? Uh, right. Okay, Renew not just solar, but a whole no, range of renewable No, it's a whole range of renewable energy covering um, biomass and also, of course, solar photovoltaic. And on the EE side, yeah, it's straightforward on the EE side. And we also do have a CDM program. The what clean, is CDM? Uh, CDM is actually oh, clean, CDM. Uh, clean and, and development mechanism. Right. Yeah. But most of the work is really on fossil fuels because oil and gas is still the big thing in Malaysia, right? Yes, that's true. But Malaysia is running out of gas and by the year 2012, Malaysia is viewed to be a net importer of oil. And at the moment, we are already importing gas and gas is due to last for another 30 years and oil is a lot less than that. So that's why in the 8th Malaysia plan, Malaysia has already put in renewable energy targets. And in the 9th Malaysia plan, we're still putting in the same renewable energy as one of the targets to achieve for attaining greater fuel autonomy. Right. When is the 8th Malaysian plan ending and when does the 9th begin? Oh, the 8th Malaysian plan actually ends on 2005 and the 9th Malaysian plan we are on it at the moment. It spans from 2006 to 2010. So that is exactly the lifespan of the entire MBIPV project, which is actually endorsed and parked under the 9th Malaysian plan. Right. Can you tell us the targets that the ninth Malaysian plan has for solar energy use in the country. Right. For solar energy, the target is very modest. It's an increase of 1.5 megawatt or 1,500 kilowatt for the entire five years. For the entire RE, the target is 350 megawatt. So most of it, as you can see, is going to come from the biomass side of it. So solar is still a very modest... Uh, it's a very goal. modest, right. It's still very modest and this MBIPV project is going to be a kickstart for these five years and then we envisage that there should be another program for the 10th Malaysian plan that is going to carry through the sustainability of solar PV in the country. Well, that's interesting. I want to know some examples, very specific examples that you're working on on the MB, MBIPV project. project. Can you tell us which buildings are now uh, in progress or have completed the installing the PV panels? Uh, okay. Under the MBI PV project, we have three types of financial incentive. The first one is the showcase category, which means they give away 100% free financing. That means a capital subsidy. Sorry, I was asking about... Uh, the uh, the oh, projects. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to now explain under the showcase, yeah. the projects that we have awarded, one of them is the PTM Zero Energy Office. There's 92 kilowatt system, the PV system that has been installed for the PTM Zero. And that's your office? That's our office, office building. Our office building. Right. So half of the PV installed is actually subsidised under this program. And another program, another buildings are taken up by Putra Badana. There's actually four units of the bungalows. That's Putra actually... Badana will be the Prime Minister's office. Putra Padana Berhad company. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, it's a company. They have actually, in along Prixin 16, there's actually 19 bungalows, of which four of them, they have actually put in the PV system. The other 15 units, they have yet to be built. So these are for the showcases. And for SP Satya, they have actually taken up six units under the showcase program. So these are the showcase projects. Moving on, we have the demo projects, which people actually receive 28% financing incentive for it and these are the 
some of the examples of the applications are private residentials for Country Heights and Samangi. These are houses, right? Houses. Right. And for building-wise, office building, Petra Badana have actually put it for their own office under the same um, demo system. Now, the biggest financial incentive is the Surya 1000, in which people actually bid for the capital subsidy. And we have done two calls of it for 30 houses. And so far, out of these 30 houses, they are spread all throughout the West Malaysia. There are some in Penang, some in Klang Valley, some in Johor and Malacca. Majority bid for it. That means, uh... Bid for it. So what happened is that they approached the service provider, and the service provider will tell them, oh, it will cost you that much to put up that much of a capacity. The service provider will be contractors? Uh, yes, the contractors. Build house builders? Proper, uh, they, are PV build. service, they are PV service providers specifically for it. Then there were the PV service provider, who's actually a one-stop centre, will ask the people, so how much do you wish to pay and how much do you wish the government to actually pay in subsidy for you? It's based on actually a bidding system. And we have a cap for every bidding of very cold. For the first call, it's actually 75% the cap. PTM administers the scheme. Uh, PTM administers the scheme. The scheme actually receives funding from various sources like the Ministry of Energy, from Global Environment Fund and private funding also comes in. So when the people bid for it, they will ask for how much from the government. And when it comes to evaluation process, it's very transparent to us. We will actually award the bidding to those who ask for the lease from us per kilowatt system. So, yeah. so if somebody wins this contract, or, you know, have the right to put in subsidised panels in, in their house. homes right. and houses, yes. how long will the subsidies last for? Will it be a lifetime subsidy? Or it's, it's a one-time payment. One time. Yes. So that means that you only have to pay, say for example, you ask for 50% incentive from the government. When it comes to payment, when the job is done, you pay 50% to the service provider and the government will pay another 50%, so it's a direct payment. Right. Are you aiming to bring this scheme to owners and operators of tall buildings? Uh, the reason being that when you have a tall building, you have many more users of that building, and it would appear that this is much more efficient than awarding it to owners of uh, standalone houses. Oh, okay. it be right? There's actually no, under the demo system, which is the 28% financing incentive scheme, there's actually no limitations whether you want to put it on a high rise or whether you want to put it on a low rise. It's actually up to the owners of the building. It is true to say that for Surya 1000 program, it's actually for mainly for residentials, but from the third call onwards, it's actually open to commercial building as well. So if you're commercial building high rise, there's no stopping you from actually bidding for it.